let's look at a method to estimate the value of pi. Here I have a, a square and inside it I have a circle. Suppose that the radius of the circle is 1. Now that makes the surface of the, of the circle in total 1 square pi and uh, the side of the square is then 2 so the surface of the of the square itself is 2 square. Now we can look also at one quarter of this entire picture and then the surface of the quarter of a circle is one quarter and quarter of, a, of, of the square is also one quarter. So if we compute the ratio between these two, between the fraction of a circle and fraction of a square, we get pi over 4. So let me denote this value by lambda. Suppose we want to estimate lambda. What we can do is to randomly sample points inside the entire square and then see what fraction belongs to the circle. Or alternatively, we can randomly sample points inside one quarter of a square and see what fraction falls into that quarter of a circle. In any case, we will be obtaining an estimate of this value lambda. So if you want to get an estimate of pi, we just need to multiply that estimate by 4. Here's sequential code that implements this idea. Here we use pseudo-random generators from the Scala library in order to implement sampling of points. Given two instances of random class, we can use the method next double to obtain a floating point in the interval 0, 1. If we get two such floating point numbers, we'll be getting points inside the quarter of, a, of the square that we considered. Then to test whether these two points, th these two coordinates, correspond to a point inside the circle, we just check whether this condition holds, whether their distance to the origin is less than 1. If this is the case, we are going to increase the counter. So, given some total number of attempts, denoted here by iter, we are going to compute how many times we ended up inside the circle. So, given the, this ratio, the number of times inside the circle divided by the total number of attempts, we get our estimate for the lambda from previous slide. And then if we multiply it by 4, we get our estimate for pi. Now let's look how we would parallelize this kind of code. Here's the parallel version of computing the same estimate. Here I'm using the parallel construct to simultaneously count these estimates for one quarter of iterations. Once I get these counts, I can simply add them up and divide them by the total number of iterations that I had and multiply the value by 4. In this case, all these four computations are proceeding in parallel and in fact they do not really have much of a shared resource since they are all proceeding independently uh, doing this computation. So this is a nice example because we do not have a shared resource and also because the amount of work can be easily subdivided into four approximately equal parts. And this is because the computation itself is such that given the value of the parameter we can easily estimate the amount of work. In this case it's in fact linear in this parameter, the number of iterations. Unfortunately not all parallel computations have this property, which means that it can be difficult to ensure that different parallel computations are balanced.